Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Golden Opportunities Coaching YouTube channel and the Pro Wrestling Logic YouTube channel. This is, of course, Pro Wrestling Logic and this is the Superstars of Wrestling Review for uh, September 2nd, 1995. Uh, Bret Hart in two weeks worth of uh, Superstars stuff here. Also, they open with the uh, alteration of uh, highlights from SummerSlam the week before. Bam Bam Bigelow, who's not long for the promotion, is going to be leaving here a little while, but uh, has a enhancement match with John Faulkner here. Bam Bam, of course, a baby face, uh, and uh, catches uh, his opponent with a couple of uh, takedowns and uh, some power maneuvers. Faulkner does get some very basic um, offensive maneuvers on Bigelow. Doesn't really get that much, though. Reverse chin lock, some clotheslines, and the diving headbutt. Bigelow, really the babyface run in 95 after his LT deal really doesn't leave him all that well. And uh, he doesn't really get over the diving head, but uh, it also doesn't get him too far. Amazing to me that Batman Bigelow, who is phenomenal in the uh, Japanese world, just never really got over here, does hit the moonsault uh, from the top and Bigelow. Without a doubt, certainly doing well here, although his moonsault kind of looks a little suspect. Anyway, highlights from the uh, SummerSlam deal and the move towards the September In Your House, which I believe is the third In Your House event. The talk of that is all the titles will be unified uh, or up for grabs in one space as uh, Owen Hart and Yokozuna, the tag team champions, will face off against the Intercontinental Champion Shawn Michaels and... Uh, the, of course, world champion still Diesel, and, uh, that is, uh, a interesting run. One of the first runs for Jean-Pierre Lafitte, who has been around for a couple of weeks. They show, uh, his, uh, Bret Hart and he going at each other because of the stolen jacket from last week's, um, or maybe the week before's, um, run here and of course uh, Jean-Pierre Lafitte otherwise known as current PCO in wrestling circles and uh, without a doubt uh, he might not be where he wants to be but still being in the position he's in has to be happy with that from a professional standpoint uh, PCO also um, looking to be in really good shape promising Bret Hart basically saying his jacket is not to be stolen um, I think they could have done more with this particular run here. Uh, enhancement talent does get a couple of moves off on PCO, body slam, and the like, hip tosses. PCO, though, does manage to use his body as a human missile and ultimately gets himself where he wants to be, Bret Hart. And again, trying to get something. I mean, 95, probably a weak point for WWF creative. At the time, and the, this uh, PCO and Bret Hart feud, a sign of that, um, you know, the modified uh, attempt at a push for PCO, sidesteps the shoulder block from the top, PCO then goes and hits the um, cannonball type maneuver, which would have made him a baby fish at the time to see a guy who I think they bill as 265 doing a move like that certainly gives him a certain level of... Uh, Caché with the fans. Also, PCO managing to hit the uh, cannonball, getting the victory. And we see uh, Bret Hart confront him on the outside of the ring here. Dean Douglas out there again and um, criticizes the bad guy, a.k.a. Razor Ramon, for his um, run here. If you've never seen these Dean Douglas promos, if you're into campy wrestling-related stuff, the character driven era i think you'll enjoy this if you're not probably not for you d'lo brown in an enhancement match as uh uh henry o godwin provides his opposition of course smoky mountain closing down a few months later so d'lo getting an opportunity here i believe under his real name of ac connor if i remember correctly or something like that but anyhow um H henry godwin you know ki kicks out Gets a few headlocks in, very basic punch kick. By this point, the slop bucket, a baby face thing, and it wasn't that long ago that that wasn't the case. They go to the outside, bit of a mini brawl. Uh, Connor gets a few shots in on his adversary, but nothing that really gives him 
a great deal of a run. Referee also is uh, happy with his victory and the inverted slop drop. And again, we see uh, King Kong Bundy make his way out. King Kong Bundy tries to attack one Henry O'Godwin because of the falling out between Godwin, Godwin and Ted DiBiase and uh, the slopping of King Kong Bundy. But ultimately, I think the Henry O'Godwin King Kong Bundy thing is Bundy's last program in the WWF, which uh, always strikes me odd that King Kong Bundy, the main eventer of WrestleMania 2, not in the Hall of Fame. Then we see a Jim Cornette and British Bulldog uh, deal here. Uh, British Bulldog says he's not intimidated by anybody, says that everyone's been cheering for Brett, everyone's been cheering for Diesel, everyone's been cheering for everybody but the Bulldog, and nobody gives him any real respect, and so he is uh, uh, turning on the fans for that reason. We see, as mentioned, another Bret Hart-related uh, match, Waylon Mercy this time through. They have a decent match for the Superstar Standard for the time anyway. Uh, Bret coming in and doing some basic brawling. Mercy, who never really gets off the ground due to having bad knees at the time. Punch kick, keeps Bret in the corner, uses the shin bone, uses the knee. Hart manages to take his man down, pretty simply put, and Brett does everything he can, drives the knee into the shoulder, and ultimately uh, gets him where he needs to get him, and ultimately kind of grabs him and uh, drops the leg across the arm. Uh, Mercy does cut him off a little bit, although doesn't really hold him there very long. Brett comes back to his feet, tries to get an advantage, uh, Mercy manages to take a couple of cheap shots wherever he can at Brett, and uh, ultimately that doesn't go exactly the way he wants it to go. Standing brawl of a match, and um, slow by today's standards, obviously, but again, slow wrestling really looks more like a fighting contest. The strikes look better because there's not, you know, take 12 kicks to one... Uh, one run, and then Mercy tries to get everything he possibly can going forward here. Um, and again, ultimately, it leads to Brett getting the Russian leg sweep, among other things. Tries to get everything he possibly can together there. Russian leg sweep, and eventually the hook in of the... Um, the hook in of the sharpshooter, not exactly your best uh, match if you're Waylon Mercy. I think Mercy, though, probably... On his way out, certainly by, what, the beginning of 19 and 96. So, certainly, this is kind of a tie-up. It always struck me that that character, which I think a lot of people value, but they don't necessarily value the, the, the modern-day impact. You're carrying crosses. You're um, certainly Bray Wyatt's and other more mentally deranged character can all be kind of chased back or traced back to a guy like this. And so uh, Bret Hart getting the victory there. Again, Bret still going toward the victory, or the attempted victory anyway, uh, with a managed series uh, and ultimately kind of getting things going there. Um, Brett, of course, going back to being the world champion by the Survivor Series here. So, still Brett in the mix. But 1995, probably the weakest of Bret Hart's years, other than maybe 1980, what, 86, 85, 86, when he first comes into the promotion. But other than that, kind of a dead, kind of a dead issue for Brett. 1995, really not his year, and, uh, It'll, it'll show off a little bit there. Needless to say, we continue our foray through the superstars of wrestling here. Um, and uh, it, it manages to get a little bit uh, going in a direction that maybe not every fan is going to like. Uh, you know, they're still trying to find themselves in the attitude era. And uh, again, Brett getting the victory. He, he manages to get uh, a couple of runs there. And uh, Brett uh, is obviously brought out with Jean-Pierre Lafitte, who still manages to go. They brawl on the outside, do he and Bret Hart. Uh, SummerSlam report with um, Todd Pettengill 
once again, and Gorilla Monsoon once again reiterating that the uh, all the championships on the line in one match. Not quite sure what Brett is think or uh, Vince is thinking here. Uh, Sean and Diesel talk about being the tag team champions and carrying all the gold, and maybe it's just a matter of uh, making the guys on top happy. But anyhow, that'll close us out for now, and we'll be back with more right after this.